What's going on my little piglets? It's your BFF Pork Chop here and I'm coming at you with entry number 17 of the June Vlog Challenge. So that makes this June 17th, 2020. How's everybody doing today? Happy National Eat Your Vegetables Day. Did you eat your vegetables today? Little boys and little girls? Little boy and girl piglets? Let me know. Did you eat your vegetables today? Uh, me? Um, actually I did. I had a salad for lunch. Uh, it was... Uh, salad topped with uh, Canadian bacon and cheese and black olives um, and then I had a pizza with a uh, onion on it so <laughs> there you go so yeah I technically ate some vegetables today <laughs> um, but yeah so hope you guys are having a great day I always hit that freaking pothole and I forget it's there uh, it's gonna kill me one of these days so uh, leaving Pizza Planet for the night but before I get started on today's festivities if you guys can please go ahead and hit that subscribe button to become a piglet if you haven't already. And uh, also keep sending me some questions, y'all. I am starving for some questions. I would really like to answer some of y'all's questions. Um, I am getting some uh, comments uh, and a few uh, concerns and people telling me how they feel about certain topics. Uh, one of my subscribers, uh, Steven, um, straight up said that he thinks that the uh, NBA, he hopes that the NBA gets uh, goes bankrupt and they never play another game again because um, he's all in for the uh, Black Lives Matter movement and he doesn't think that uh, the NBA players need to be uh, put on a pedestal for uh, people to admire and uh, to be heroes for younger generations of African Americans. Um, I mean, to each their own. Um, in my honest opinion, not saying that his opinion's wrong, like I say, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Opinions are like assholes, everybody's got one. Uh, some people call some assholes better than the others. Some people have uh, more uh, have different opinions than others. But uh, to each their own for him, uh, I do believe that the, uh, the NBA players should be looked up to um, because uh, NBA, whether it be NBA, uh, baseball, uh, players or you know football players what have you um, if there's an african-american uh, athlete athlete I didn't know athlete had three syllables athlete that's amazing um, if there's a, an african-american af athlete that inspires like inner city kids or somebody that lives below the poverty line to uh, pick up a baseball bat or to uh, learn how to catch a football or to uh, shoot an alley-oop, you know, not shoot an alley-oop, that was a stupid uh, thing, uh, to shoot a three-pointer is what I was going for, and then alley-oop for some reason came into my mind. But um, if that inspires them to, uh, so to speak, get out of uh, the, the pit and, you know, make something of themselves, if I remember correctly, uh, I, don't, I think LeBron James actually uh, came up in a pretty poor community. Um, so... And then look at him now. He, the guy is, you know, one of the major faces of the organization and the league in general. And, you know, good for them. Good on them. Um, so I believe, you know, Stephen, I'm not disrespecting your opinion. Uh, I just, I, I see it opposite than uh, you do. And that's okay. We are allowed to have different opinions on topics. There are plenty of topics that I have pop culture-wise and politically that I think that would drive some of y'all crazy. But it's, you know, my thought process, they're my opinions, and you have your own thought processes and your own opinions. So there you go. Steven, thank you so much for giving me that comment. I greatly appreciate you. And yeah, so we'll go with that. Um, the ongoing... Oh boy, the ongoing baseball, speaking of sports, baseball um, situation has uh, unfolded a little bit, and by that I mean uh, less than 24 hours ago it was, yeah, we got together, the uh, the Players Association and the Commissioner got together, and they, uh, they ironed out the details, everything looks good, everything looks great. 60 games, it's going to look like 60 plus games, and uh, there's going to be extended playoffs for uh, this season and next. Um, and then the uh, bargaining agreement expires, and you know, who knows, maybe they'll extend it past that, which I think they will. Um, and it just uh, now happened uh, that the, uh, the players said that they don't want the 60 games. They don't like the 60 games. They're not in love with it. Um, 
but also there are some players that are saying you tell us when and where and uh, they're kind of talking both sides of their mouths right now uh, one part of the mouth they're saying when and where the other part is mm, we don't like the 60 games because uh, they want to get paid more uh, the more games that they play the more they get paid and their uh, pro rate um, goes up the more games that they play and uh, good on them but you know you're a bunch of millionaires crying 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 think about it you know but I believe we are going to get a baseball season at some point um, I do believe I'm, I'm the way that I think it's going to be is it's going to be a mid-July thing it's going to be mid-July before we have baseball so we still got to wait another like month for this to get resolved um, and hopefully it comes back uh, I'm like I said kind of projecting here that it's going to come back um a couple weeks before uh, basketball gets started for uh, their their uh, miniaturized season before they get to their playoffs. And also the bargaining thing uh, said that it was going to be an extended playoffs also for baseball. So they got that going for them. It looks like a win-win. It looks like something that's going to be great for them. So just do your part, MLB. We need you. We need sports. We need something you know, during this pandemic and during this uh, social injustice and uh, police brutality, we kind of need something to uh, numb the pain a little bit, to uh, distract us from um, everyday life. Uh, that's why I'm such a big fan of music and going to concerts and going to see movies. Uh, I put sports right there in that line because it's a distraction, you know? I don't like working between two jobs I don't like working 50 hours a week I don't but I do because it provides for my family and it you know puts food in our bellies and it, it, it pays you know the bills to get the lights on and it pays for my dogs to get what they need and gas in my car so I do it but before the whole pandemic bullshit happened I loved going to the movies going to the movies was something that I loved doing uh, I went to a KISS concert right before the pandemic, like literally like a day or two before everything kind of went to shit. Um, and sports, absolutely sports. I, I can't get enough sports, guys. I, I'm a big sports fan. And uh, when it disappeared with the pandemic, it felt like a piece of me went missing also. And I'm just, I just want, I just want sports back, y'all. That's, that's all I'm saying. I just want my damn sports back. I'm being selfish about it. I'm sorry. And, you know, it's just something to do, something to think about other than, you know, how crappy certain people are and certain places on the map, you know, and it's just, there you go. That's all I have to say about that. Um, wanted to talk about real quick, uh, I was listening, like I said, uh, I went on the road last night or yesterday for uh, the wholesale that I, sorry, I bit my tongue. Oh, wow. I went on the road for the wholesaler yesterday, and I'm going to do it again. It's pretty much going to be more of the same, uh, so I'll hopefully get back around 4 o'clock. So the more time on the road, the better, and it looks like I'm taking the longest route tomorrow. Uh, one of the guys, he literally has like a four-hour trip, and then another one of the guys has like probably like a three-and-a-half, four-hour trip, so it's kind of like, uh, what are you going to do? because mine looks like it's going to be practically almost a full day. So, there you have it. Um, let's see, there is a Nathaniel. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, my roommate's, my roommate's boyfriend is sitting in his car, and I'm about to be sitting in my car, so it's kind of like a car sitting on test, but anyway. And then, um, so I was listening to Bro Ohio, um, one of my favorite podcasts to listen to. They're, they're a little rough around the edges. They're not politically correct at all. They, they talk about just tongue-in-cheek stuff, um, but they do talk about some real content. Uh, they talked about Anonymous a, f a couple of weeks ago. They talked about uh, their newest episode was called Glitch in the Matrix. And it talks about how, you know, are we in a simulation? Is it just a giant game of The Sims and who's controlling us? Um, just something to think about. Um, you know, a couple of stories, a couple of instances that was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. Uh, they went on Reddit. They went on Facebook. They went all over the place, you know, trying to find these stories. And some of them, I was just like, wow, that is crazy to think about. 
one of the stories was about um, this uh, f this family. It was a uh, mom and a dad and a three-year-old daughter, and they were moving, and the three-year-old stayed behind um, while mom and dad went to go look at this potential house, and they toured the house. They absolutely loved it. The realtor was willing to make them an offer pretty quickly, and so they they got the house. They're like, okay, this house is fantastic. Let's go for it. And so they got back and uh, negotiated, and they got the house. And they told their daughter, okay, you get to pick what room you want to be yours. You get to pick it. And she said, I want the dinosaur room. I'm like, okay, the dinosaur room, okay. All right. I don't know what the hell she's talking about, but maybe she made it up. You know, kids are imaginative, you know, whatever. So they uh, went and... Um, said, okay. When they got to the house, they're like, go to the dinosaur room. That's your room. Go for it. And she opens the closet and there were dinosaur stickers all on the inside of this closet. She'd never seen the house before. Mom and dad never opened the closet to see. And it just, it was ridiculous and it was freaky that she wasn't even there, but she knew what room she wanted. And it was just kind of like, kind of makes you think like what the hell man so that and then there was one other story i don't know the full details i'm paraphrasing here and i'm just making stuff uh some parts of the story like like i said paraphrasing and, and getting names wrong and stuff but um there was this girl and that, one more story we're gonna do one more story uh there was this girl that was having these reoccurring dreams uh about this woman you know beautiful woman long dark hair and just just pale not not really pale skin she had amazing skin and she was really pretty and I think her name was Amelia um, so she kept having dreams about this woman named Amelia she never met her before she but it's like one of those things because like I've talked about this before and actually a dream that I had once uh, oh and I'm gonna get to a dream story here in a bit a dream that I had last night uh, when you see faces in your dreams, it's people that you've seen before. It's people you've encountered before. It's not like making up new faces as you go. You've seen these people before, whether you know them or not. You could be having a dream about being in a coffee house and, and the barista could be somebody that you've seen in passing or it could have been like an old you know, middle school teacher. It could have been your next door neighbor. It could have been anybody. Um, so she starts, you know, researching her name like on Facebook and you know search engines and engines and stuff and nothing's coming up with this woman nothing is and so uh, one day she's driving and she gets a call on her phone so she looks down she's at a red light but she looks down and the light had turned green and the person behind her was anxious you know had was in a hurry so they whipped around her and they went through the light and they got t-boned and then uh she discovered that both cars involved in the accident they both perished they both they both died pretty much at the scene and she it was, it was, it was an unknown phone number so she called it and it just rang and rang and rang and rang and the voice you know I had the voicemail set up and it said hi this is Amelia sorry I can't get to the phone right now leave me a message and I'll get back to you and she was like what and so finally after a, a few days she finally gets a hold of her and tells her hey I know this is weird but can you send me a picture of yourself because I want to see what you look like and so she sends her the picture and it's the girl that she's seen in her dreams and she was like also freaked out because Amelia was like I don't remember calling you I've never heard of you before I don't even have your cell phone number I don't know what the hell's going on so she pretty much saw this Amelia woman as like a guardian angel she saved her from perishing in this car accident practically and so I thought that was very interesting but anyway I had a dream last night we're gonna get to it. We're gonna get to it. We're gonna get to it really quick. Uh, so there's this street in Amarillo called Sansi. 
and at the very edge of it, there's the interstate, which is the I-40, or is it I-27? God, I can't remember. Anyway, one of the interstates, and uh, on the left side of the road, there's a Jimmy John's and a nail salon, and a dentistry, I think. Like, it's like a little sweet. And then on the other side is this hotel called Drury, um, which I've actually known a couple people that have worked there previously. And so anyway, I guess in my dream, in that strip mall, there, uh, I guess the, uh, the dentistry or the nail salon went out of business and my wife's flower shop that she currently work, work that she works at, the uh, flower shop that my wife works at opened a second location in that strip mall. Uh, I guess to get that part of the town, which is already in that part of the town. But anyway, so my wife, I guess, uh, was like running it. So while the, uh, the boss, while the owner was at the other shop, my wife was running this one. And so I went to go visit her, went to go say hi to her and I left. And as I was driving, I was like, oh man, I really need to use the bathroom. So instead of going back to my wife's flower shop, I went to Drury and just walked in. And like the second I walked in, I already noticed this woman was kind of keeping her eyes on me. She was like, you know, what the hell is this guy doing here? He looks suspicious. He looks sketchy. So I go into this bathroom and it's this, the bathroom's not like this at all. I've been to this bathroom a couple of times. Um, it is literally just a square room with a toilet that's like facing the right wall and there's no stall and there's no lock on the door so i'm literally just sitting on this toilet in the middle of this room and i'm on my phone you know you're passing the time people do it and this man and woman stumble in they they, they stumble into the room and they have a full-blown conversation while i'm sitting there doing my thing and I'm just like okay this is this is weird this is ridiculous and so I immediately you know finish up and then I go I leave and then the woman that was eyeing me when I walked in was kind of like excuse me sir 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 and I was like oh I'm looking for somebody they're not here it's no big deal and I walk out the door because I was I was too embarrassed to say oh I just need a place to take a shit have a good day um so I walk out the front door and she stops me at the front door and she says, um, you're no longer allowed on this property ever again. I was like, what? What, what, what are you talking about? Why the hell am I? Why? Cause I, I took a shit and I'm, I'm not staying at this hotel. What, what, why, why am I not allowed on this property is pretty much what I was thinking. And she said, uh, we were informed that you were caught excuse my language, but I've already said shit like five times and I think I've said fuck, I just said fuck, I think for the first time. You were caught masturbating in the bathroom, is what they said. Oh, what the fuck? What? No, I was using the restroom and I was on my phone and your bathroom has no lock and it has no stall, so I definitely wasn't doing that in there. And then they said, we also had reports that you were, um, that you were flirting with an underage girl. Like, I, like they accused me of being a pedophile or something. Like, I talked to this little girl and was, like, asking her sexual questions and stuff. But I was like, first of all, gross. That is, ugh, that's, that's terrible. Um, so they said, you're no longer allowed here ever again. And if we ever catch you here, we're calling the police. And I was like, oh. I was like, whatever. Like, I'm innocent on both these, you know, so-called, so y'all caught me doing this, y'all caught me doing that. Um, so I'm just never going to come to this hotel again. Screw y'all. I don't want to be here anyway. And then a group, I guess, of all the girls that have worked, that, that were working at the hotel, just, they circle me like it's a freaking mosh pit. And one girl gets so close to my face and is just talking, talking crap to me. She gets so close that our lips touch. And then she's like, oh, you like that? She's like, I just turned 18, so I'm probably not good enough for you, am I? Because you like to talk to little girls. I was like, 
step off. Like, get away. Go away. I don't, I don't want to, no, go away. I'm just, I, I just want to leave. I want to get out of here. Um, and if you guys have ever seen to catch a predator, uh, I was like, where are the cops? Because <laughs> I know that if I'm getting caught being a pedophile, I know that the cops are around here somewhere about to bust my ass. Um, but uh, they informed me that, no, uh, you have to come back tomorrow and we're going to have a trial. I was like, a trial? This dream is just getting ridiculous. Um, and so I come back the next day. And there's this little uh, rectangular table I sit at. There's somebody at, at the foot of the table, and I'm sitting on the left side of the table. And then there's two people. I guess one of them is a, is a detective or something on the other side of the table. And they're you know they're they're grilling me. They're 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 saying like we caught you know you were caught doing this. You were caught doing that. You were caught masturbating. That's an offense. We, we you were uh, solic trying to solicit an underage girl. Yeah, I'm just like, okay, no, I wasn't. I just came here. You know, and then, of course, they're like, and it's suspicious that you walk through the door. You're not a staying guest. You don't know anybody that's staying here. Why are, Why were you in this hotel if you did not have malintent to do something like, you know, pleasuring yourself or talking to an underage girl? And I'm just like, okay, can we, like, break for lunch or something? Because this is getting ridiculous. So they accept my request, and we go. And, of course, I go break for lunch, and, of course, the same girls from the day before are circling me, and they're just, yeah, 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 pedophile, you you're a piece of shit, you should get castrated, yeah. and I'm just like, mother, and then, so I go back to the table after lunch is, is over, and I straight up tell the manager, I'm okay, listen, I came in here to take a shit, because I really had to take a shit, I didn't want to tell you, because I was too embarrassed, but I came in here to use the restroom, and... Now I'm regretting it because now I'm being accused of being a pervert and a pedophile on top of that. And I just don't appreciate that. And so I guess she goes to the back room and she talks to the GM or the owner of the hotel franchise or whatever. And then comes back and then she has this just defeated look on her face. And she's like, okay, you're cleared. I was like, I'm cleared. Okay. I'm like, we, uh, we're sorry for accusing you of the things that you did. I'm like, you're damn right. You're sorry. What the hell? You know, this could have ruined me for something I didn't even do twice, two different instances. And I'm like, so as a, I'm sorry package, you know, the Joe trip I'm sorry package. Um, we're going to allow you and up to 14 people stay here for the weekend all expenses paid you can use the pool you can eat the breakfast and the dinner it's on us you can get drinks if you want which i don't drink so i was like whatever um then we'll call it good right and then i woke up i'm like well first of all i would have been like that sounds awesome but i want a little bit more because i want to own stocks in this hotel i want to do this i want to do that because what y'all did to me almost ruined me but guys that's my little story for you guys i hope you guys enjoyed that little story about my dream and uh, thank y'all so much once again for dropping by. Thanks for everything. You guys are fantastic. Please keep sending me questions, comments, concerns, whatever. And I will answer them the best I can either on these videos or in the comments section down below. Uh, also, please participate in the poll I have going for the Huskies for Madden 21 about the uh, 92 factor. That's what I forgot, I forgot the name of it yesterday, but it's, it's the 92 factor. And uh, yeah, we'll just talk about that then. And also... I forgot to mention this on here. I mentioned it on Facebook, but yesterday was Chandler, my dog Chandler that you guys uh, saw a couple days ago. It was his third birthday. He turned three years old and uh, we brought him home. I think we brought him home like a week after we got married or something like that. So um, yeah, there you go. It was his third birthday and I forgot to mention that and I felt like a terrible doggo dad. But thank y'all so much once again for dropping by and always remember my little piglets. Colin Porkchop loves y'all the most. So y'all take it easy, guys. I'll see y'all next time, which is tomorrow. Bye, guys!